so I am back in credit card debt. Hi, I'm Shannon of The Wealth Vibe, and I create videos to help you eliminate debt, grow your income, and build wealth. And I am back with a monthly budget video, and I'm going to give you all the juicy details about how my finances have changed, and what I'm spending my money on in the month of September, and we're going to get into this credit card debt. Yes, I'm back in credit card debt, and we're going to talk about it. So let's get into it right now. Let's start off with my income. You know that I'm generally super transparent about the amount of money that I make, how I make my money, and how I spend it, but I can't do that anymore. So I'm gonna tell you how much money I am bringing in for the month in total, but I'm not gonna tell you exactly from each line item. So for the month of September, I'll have four different income sources. So that's my primary job, and then I have two teaching jobs where I'm an adjunct professor at two different universities, and then I also made some money through participating in a focus group and some research study. So across those four different income sources for the month of September, I'll bring in $12,136, and that is all after tax. That's a net what I'm bringing home in my paycheck every single month. So that's a huge chunk of money that I'll be able to use for all of my budgeting needs. So now let's get into all of my expenses. To start off, about 11% of my income goes towards giving. So that is through ties and also towards a sinking fund that I put about a hundred or so dollars every month into for gifts, or it's about maybe $175 that I put in for gifts, and that's including birthday gifts, any other gifts, and Christmas gifts, but it's mainly just Christmas and um, birthday gifts. The next category is savings and investments, and this is where a large portion of my money is going every month. So a little over 50% of my money is going towards this category, and this is all after tax savings and investments. And so I have about $6,000 that's going into a savings account, which really I'm earmarking towards paying off my student loans. But right now it's kind of a, a pseudo emergency fund, pseudo savings for my student loans. But we'll talk about that later when I pay off my student loans by the end of this year. So, but we'll get into that later, a little later. But, so about $6,000 is going towards that and then about $500 is going towards an IRA. So because of my income now, I'm not eligible to put money into a Roth IRA directly. So I have to put money into a traditional IRA first and then convert it into a Roth IRA by doing a backdoor IRA. All right, so now let's talk about housing. So I recently moved from Columbus, Georgia to Atlanta, Georgia, so I'm back in the A, and I am in a three bedroom, two and a half bath townhouse. And the rent is about $1,600 a month. Since my rent covers my water bill, the rest of my utilities are internet, power, and my phone bill. And that is about 2% of my budget that I am allotting for that. So my electricity bill is a lot higher now than it was in my one bedroom apartment. I'm paying about $120, but everything else is about normal and what I had been paying before when I lived elsewhere. So it's not too bad and it's only 2%, so I think that's pretty good. The next category of my budget is food. So for food, I decided that I was going to do a meal plan, which I started back in May. And since May, I have lost about 20 pounds. So I'm super grateful for, you know, the ability to be able to pay for a meal plan. And it has really helped me out a lot and I find it super worth it. But obviously it ain't cheap. So the meal plan probably runs me about $176 every single week. And that gives me two meals per day, seven days a week. So it's kind of pricey, but it's not more than you would spend like eating out every day. But I'm eating like home cooked food in a sense. It's healthy, it's portion control, and it's helped me lose 20 pounds. And maybe even a little more. I haven't weighed myself in a, a little bit. But I think it's money well spent, but it is about $700 a month 
just on that. And then since I've kind of gotten closer to my goal weight, I've decided that I want to, you know, eat out every once in a while or sometimes I even just go to the grocery store still to get like um, I get Zevia it's a like a zero calorie stevia sweetened soda and just other like little things that I might just go to the grocery store to get and so I add an extra hundred dollars a month for that so I'm really dedicated to this meal plan but it does cost a lot a lot of money, a lot more money than I was spending before on food. But I think it's well worth it. And since I have the resources to it, to do it, I'm going to keep doing it because it saves me a whole lot of time. And you guys have no idea how busy I am nowadays. So, yeah. Uh, about $800 a month on food. Now for transportation, since the pandemic started, I haven't been driving much. And all I pay in terms of transportation is for um, gas, which I probably fill up once a month. And my car gets full on about $20, a little less than $20. So I'm not spending a lot of money on gas. And then I put aside $150 or so towards a sinking fund that is for car insurance, which I pay in October and April twice a year, I pay the six month premium for that. And so I just save money towards that. So my transportation expenses are really, really low. Now in terms of health, I put aside about $80 a month into a sinking fund, which I keep all my sinking funds, by the way, in Simple Bank. And so I put $80 direct deposited from my paycheck straight into Simple Bank and $80 of that goes into like a digital envelope um, for health expenses. And so for my health expenses, I'm just saving for anything that I might need to pay for health related. So like a copay or anything like that. Actually in the month of September, I am going to the doctor. <laughs> all the doctors okay so i'm going to the dentist i'm going to the eye doctor the gynecologist and my primary care doctor and i was trying to get a dermatologist appointment but my dermatologist she was like booked and busy like all the time i literally looked for an appointment all the way next year june or july and she was booked but anyway, I'm going to all the other appointments, so my insurance is really good, but I know that I have a few co-pays. Some places don't have, I don't have to pay co-pays, like for the dentist and like for eye care, I know I don't have co-pays, but I think for medical care, I do. And then for um, eye care, I plan on getting new glasses and contacts as well. And so that's gonna run me up a little bit. So far in my sinking fund, I do have about $300 in that fund so i'm hoping that that will cover everything for all of my copay needs but i do have an hsa which i'm trying not to use because it does give you a lot more savings when you don't use it so if i don't have all the money that i need i will just pull the money from a different account and just pay for whatever i need in terms of like getting my glasses or paying the copays and you know contacts and whatnot so that is healthcare, and it really is in terms of budgeting wise it's only about one percent of my budgeted income but because i always save for things in terms of the money that i spend for the month it's probably a little bit more um in terms of the percentage of spending from the money that I make, if that makes sense. The next category in my budget is personal expenses. So that includes like toiletries, home care, like I actually have a housekeeper now. She's actually coming tomorrow and she costs $150 or $140 with tip um, to clean the entire house. And she comes like every three to four weeks. So that comes out of my personal, um, my fun money, clothing and pretty much anything that's like personal to me like deodorant lotion all those things i have in the personal category and i set aside like smaller increments of money for you know smaller line items like i said clothing or toiletries or household stuff i have line items for those specifically and that accounts for about four percent of my monthly budget to pay for all of that stuff. And most of the time, I'm not even spending that much money. It's just really about the sinking funds. Like I put a certain amount of money every single month into a sinking fund. Sometimes I don't use any of that money. And sometimes I use all the money that I put in for that month plus money that I had from previous months. You know, so that's why I really like sinking funds because I don't have to 
put aside like the exact money about money every single month like I have a reserve in a sense of money that I can spend from sometimes I spend from it sometimes I don't and then I I am also saving for entertainment as well so I put about $100 into one of my sinking funds for entertainment but with the pandemic who who's entertaining <laughs> I will let me tell y'all something Atlanta is out me on the other hand I am not out I don't go nowhere so yeah the hundred dollars I'm putting aside is not is not being used however like me and my boyfriend do plan to take a few trips like in the next few months um obviously the holidays are coming up so I probably will be spending that money like it's kind of sitting in reserves to be spent later on but I do every month put a hundred dollars aside for entertainment purposes but entertainment has been kind of weak lately <laughs> so, okay so the last category in my budget is debt if you've been following me for the past year um i've been trying to pay off debt since october 2017. damn we about to hit october 2020. it's been three years now since i've been on this journey to pay off debt and i successfully got rid of all my credit card debt right but now i'm back in credit card debt and the reason for that is not because I don't have the money to spend or to pay off these debts. It's just because I wanted to give myself more space and opportunity to save money and build up like a, a buffer in a sense rather than paying money on the things that I bought. So what did I buy? So as I mentioned earlier, I moved into a new home. And so the house has two floors and right outside of this door actually is a loft area. It's a pretty big loft area and it's empty. And what I envisioned for like just my home life since I work from home and everything now is just to be able to like do everything up on the first floor because I hate stairs. Oh, I hate stairs. But <laughs> I have stairs. But my, my idea is just to build like a whole living area upstairs where I can literally go from my bedroom to my office, which we're in now, and go chill in the loft area and never have to go downstairs. Cause it, and I built it out really to do that because I even have like a refrigerator up here, snacks, drink, I have everything up here. Um, so I tell let's say that I'm trying to furnish it <laughs> so that I don't have to ever go downstairs for anything. And so in order to do that, I needed to buy another couch. Um, so I have a TV up here in the loft area, but no couch. And I bought a new couch for downstairs. My old couch, my old blue couch is actually sitting right in front of me in my office. Um, but it's, it was never the most comfortable couch. So that's why I bought newer couches. So I bought a couch for downstairs, which I did um, pay 100%. And that was actually an accident. So my plan was to put that on a credit card as well. So I bought my couch downstairs from West Elm and they had like paypal checkout and it was like you can get zero percent interest on your purchases for six months if you you know apply for a line of credit so i applied for the line of credit while i was um doing the checkout for that couch downstairs but i didn't i didn't realize that i was still paying with my normal debit card that was associated with my paypal and not the line of credit so i ended up paying for the couch in full rather than putting it on the line of credit. But then I went ahead and bought the other couch that's currently being built for the loft. And um, I put that on the line of credit because I had already applied for it and got approved. So I was like, why not put it on there? So I bought a couch for upstairs and then a, um, a what is it called? A coffee table, which I was originally planning to put downstairs, but I came up with a different idea for coffee tables. So that coffee table that I bought also from West Elm is going upstairs as well. And so I put about $2,000 or $2,200 because I got everything on sale, okay? Got everything on 35% sale <laughs> um, from West Elm. So everything came out to like about $2,000. That's including like shipping, delivery, and everything. And so um, the reason why I don't know the full amount is because since the couch is still being built, 
they have not fully put the charge onto my PayPal line of credit. They just kind of like checked it to see if it was available. And then when the couch is actually like being shipped to me, then they'll actually charge the card because that's the exact same thing that they did with the other couch. And so um, I know eventually I'll have about $2,000 that I need to pay, but as of right now, I only have, to, I only have about $500 from the coffee table that's on that line of credit. And so essentially, when we put putting aside like 300 or something dollars a month towards paying that down in the next six months, I have until March to pay it off. And yeah, so I have back in debt, but I have a plan and I'm getting to buy a couch on 0% interest. No, it just was enticing. I decided I was going to do it, so I did it. So I just had to say, don't worry about me. I'm back in credit card debt, but I'm not worried about it, not one bit, because I have all the money that I need in a bank account to pay it off if needed. I can pay, I can pay it off now. So yes, I'm back in credit card debt, but it's not a major issue to me. And I can't wait to do my net worth video because y'all, I think I might be close to a zero net worth, y'all. <laughs> I mean, that's nothing to be like, you know, super excited about, but when you're coming from a negative $108,000 net worth to having a zero net worth, look. That is my September budget. Let me know what you think about my budget. I am doing a lot with my money, a lot of saving and investing, so I'm super excited about that. And I'm just super blessed to know that during this pandemic, I am doing very, very well financially. And I'm just excited about what is to come. So let me know how you're doing, how you're spending your money down in the comment section. And please stay tuned for the live that I plan to do later on this week and also for my network update. So talk to you soon.